Holy mother of modern warfare leaks. Today, we've got a bombshell to discuss. That bombshell being a 200 player battle royale in the future of modern warfare because no longer is it really all just a rumor and hearsay. Reddit user Senesalo, who we've talked about here plenty of times in the recent days, has dug up a huge portion of modern warfare's upcoming battle royale mode. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Today, we're gonna break down all of that all you need to know so be sure to sit back relax hit that like button if you're excited for what's to come likely free to play at that if it still follows previous rumors and do be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already we're going to keep you up to date with absolutely everything you need to know on a daily basis in the cod universe but with that said let's get into it because there is so much to talk about naturally i'll link the entire thread down there in the description below if you guys want to check it out it's going to have a lot more imagery than what we'll showcase here in this video and it will have everything you can follow along at your own pace if you want to but let's, let's talk about some of the mode specifics here with this. Firstly, well, 200 players. That's absolutely crazy to think about. But when you think about how much Infinity Ward and Modern Warfare are looking to push the boundaries of those player counts within the Call of Duty sphere, that actually makes sense. We saw, of course, 10v10, 32v32, and likely upwards of even more in MP later on down the line. We saw those pushing the boundaries for those player counts within standard MP, so why not do that also with the Battle Royale? And also with the scope and scale of the map, which we'll talk about in just a second, 200 players looks to fill it out and may not even be enough, which is crazy. But we'll end up seeing solos, duos, and squads of four, apparently. There's an endgame radar, which apparently is on when we talk about some of these specifics as well, which may be something that I don't know if that's defaulted by on accidentally. That doesn't seem like the greatest thing to have, but it's there apparently. We also see that the infiltration option or how you come in is via C-130. There's going to be a pre-game lobby free-for-all, which I imagine it's very similar to how PUBG does it. The max health, which I'm assuming you can go past their standard 100 health, is 150 with something like a trauma kit, though we don't know if there's actually the name of a trauma kit. There's going to be last stand with last stand health of 100. I'd imagine that's kind of like a downed mechanic. Last stand revive health is 30, so you drop down whenever you're getting revived then there's going to be the down timer if you can be down for 60 seconds it takes seven seconds to revive and there's going to be a friendly fire punish limit of two and the gulag is on we'll come back to that in a second because it's pretty crazy but we also see some functions through private match as well indicating that we'll have what blackout really didn't in the way of customization with your game and how it interacts with players hopefully with larger player counts than 16 meaning that we can do some maybe custom games and such when it comes along with that jump in and play our own little matches with you guys as a sort of community gaming thing to me that sounds pretty awesome but those things include infiltration options of either coming in via c-130 convoy or blackhawk you can choose starting weapons of your fist g21 pistol mp5 m4a1 or a knife you can enable br loot which you can turn on or off loot on the supported maps it seems like there's also going to be the circle star size overriding which the size of the damage circle at the start of the map can be changed the default match though starts with no circle so you can use it for smaller matches and also you can change the damage multiplier in various different aspects now talking game mechanics there's going to be a respawn function as well in which you can gather respawn tokens they can be looted but after one use respawn tokens are disabled for that specific player so you get one respawn per game it seems like now to respawn a teammate you need to obtain a respawn token then drop their body near an ambulance once the body is dropped at the ambulance, the player will enter the Gulag queue for a chance to win a 1v1 and respawn into the match. We'll talk about that a little further, but that's a really interesting twist. At some point during the match, the Gulag will be closed and no longer usable, thus preventing any respawns. Probably a late game mechanic to, of course, make sure that it doesn't get out of hand for those final battles. Once a player has respawned, though, they must locate and activate a mobile armory to retrieve their loadout that they had previously. Now the Gulag, coming back to this, is how you respawn. It's a 1v1 single round match, when to respawn. When enabled, players will have a chance to respawn back into the match by winning a 1v1 fight. The Gulag acts as a King of the Hill style gauntlet, meaning players in the Gulag queue will spectate the players who are currently fighting in the match. There will be a countdown on screen indicating how many rounds are left until you fight. 
A jailbreak happens every so often and kicks all players out of the gulag and back into the match. So when that happens randomly, all players won't have to fight back, but instead will just naturally come back into the game. Players will have the ability to also apparently place bets on the players that are fighting in the current 1v1s using Plunder, which is a monetary system in game, which we'll get to in just a little bit. So that kind of stuff sounds crazy, but really cool. Now, let's talk about the map a little bit here with this, because what will we be able to see in terms of playable area? There's going to be zones and points of interest. As for the zones, we see airfield, boneyard, dam, downtown, gulag, hospital, layover, lumber, overgrown, port, quarry, storage town, super center, train yard, and TV station. Now, there's also going to be points of interest, which my guess is that these are larger locations in one of two different aspects. Either one, not associated as a part of specific zones and are kind of their own standalone thing that you'll see as larger areas, but not necessarily entire zones or cities like we'd see, or they could be a part of some zones so that they're repeating locations. We see these points of interest, though, being bank, fire station, gas station, gun store, pharmacy, or police station. And I'm still kind of up in the air on where I think this may go out of those two theories we just listed, simply because they're kind of general buildings that you'd normally see within various cities, and also the fact that they are relatively smaller by comparison, so they could be repeating, but also they could be larger things. I know that in, say, H1Z1, you had multiple pharmacies given the various locations you may have been at, whether you were in the major city or on an outskirts, but things like the police station, there was only, to my recollection, one of them. So, I think it could go either way here with this one, but the thing that I want to get across is the scale of this, how wild this is going to be. The fact that this is going to be a world of modern warfare. We talked about how it made sense to imagine this coming a few days ago when we talked about the crossover between ground war maps and spec ops missions, how you can see some in the distance of others in which the scale of that sets the idea that battle royale would be absolutely insane. But get this, if you take a look at the data mined Battle Royale map, you can see all three ground war maps of Karst, River Quarry, Krovnik Farmland, and Tavors District, as well as all four Spec Ops missions playable areas, which are just as large, if not as large as the ground war maps, and it only accounts for all together, all of those around 25% of the playable map put together. So when I saw that there was some overlap, I was like, dang, this has to be a fair share of the map and we've already kind of played it. We're already accustomed to it, right? But turns out that's actually so wrong. There's gonna be so many zones and hotspots, locations, and even full-blown city areas. I'm having a hard time processing the scale of this and how this is able to be done but I'm excited for it. Now, as we mentioned, you take a C-130N, which I imagine is the same exact animation as respawning in Spec Ops, which if you've played that, is dropping out of a C-130 and parachuting in. But what's curious also is that it seems like it's taken a niche thing from Apex Legends with the Jump Master. It says, the Jump Master of a squad can select a deployment point prior to the match start. If the Jump Master chooses to discard the role, any player can become it. Players who are not the Jump Master have the ability to jump separately from the team. If you detach from the Jump Master, you will not drop in proximity to your loadout bag. Now, once you land, you can end up, of course, finding your loot. That's how all battle royales work, but we end up seeing some information on the loot in this and what may be coming. As for the rarities, you'll see white, green, blue, purple, and gold increasing in rarity and, of course, probably how good the items are as it goes up. You'll end up having limited inventory space. I'd imagine a backpack as well includes some expansion of that. There's a requisition airdrop timer, which is 30 seconds long. Don't know what that is. We also see that all weapons attachments, equipment, field upgrades, and kill streaks will be from multiplayer. There are things like gas masks, vests, helmets, bandages, ammo, backpacks, portable defibrillators, and plunder. You cannot hold two of the same weapons. Attachments are incompatible with some weapons, and if they are, the attachments will be placed in a player's backpack. Supply crates contain potentially valuable equipment and or items, and there's going to be armor. But one interesting thing is the fact that you cannot take armor of lower level than the currently equipped armor you have, which is, I think, a nice little quality of life thing. If they look similar, you may accidentally say swap a level two for a level one without realizing it, but if it doesn't let you even pick it up, you'll know what you have is better. But speaking of armor, let's expand upon that one. Armor ends up having a couple of different levels. We'll see helmets of level one, two, and three, it seems. The top level reducing headshot damage by 30 and also reducing the effect of flash and concussion grenades. Right below that, it's going to reduce 
reduce the headshot damage by 30, and then the base level will reduce headshot damage by 15. Ballistic Vests 1, 2, and 3 will absorb 50 damage, 150 damage, and 150 damage, as well as increasing healing item usage by 25, respectively. Now, on top of other loot, you'll also be able to find things like perks. There's a bunch of these already detailed in which they include High Alert, which grants vision when an enemy looks at you from outside your field of view, Spotter, which allows enemy equipment within a small radius to be visible and highlighted to you even through walls, Tracker, which will allow enemies to leave footprints as they move and increase your crouch movement speed. Stalker, which will allow for faster movement speed while aiming down sights. Marksman, which will allow you to identify enemies from farther away by showing their names at a greater distance. Sleight of Hand, which will allow you to reload your weapons 50% faster than normal. Armorer, which will allow you to use armor plates 20% faster, meaning that we are going to have an armor plate mechanic allowing us to seemingly regenerate our armor that we have on us. And with this perk, you'll also get 10% more armor back with each plate. Artisan Tastes, which will allow you to have weapons that you pick up, grant you a chance to automatically upgrade this, hinting at that there will be upgrades for weapons, which is interesting. Deep Pockets, which any throwable equipment you pick up has an extra use. Grenadier will allow you to have any throwable equipment you pick up have an extra use as well. Healer will allow your medic items to continue to heal you for an additional 25% of their value over the next 20 seconds. Thief will give you the ability to, when you harvest, generate 20% more plunder. Ammo Scavenger allows you to gain ammunition based off of enemies you kill. Armor Scavenger, same thing, but for armor plates instead. Medic Scavenger, again, same thing, but with medic items. Plunder Scavenger, which will allow you to do the same thing again with Plunder instead. Bounty Hunter, if you kill someone with more perks than you, you gain enough points to match them, and then you can replace that perk. Ghost, you are invisible to drones and sensors. Sneaky, your footsteps are invisible and enemies are not warned when you track them. And Explosive Ordnance Disposal, which offers explosive resistance and you can capture enemy claymores and mines. Apparently, there will be kill streaks as well, which I'm really curious to see how this works out. Apparently, this is going to be activating using your lethal and tactical buttons, and it mentions that juggernauts cannot pick up loot. So, if you get a 15 kill streak or whatever it is, seems like you can get in that juggernaut armor as well, which may be a terrible pain to go up against. That's the only way I can think about it. But also, apparently, UAV satellite trucks must be charged before scanning an area, and once used, they will remain on cooldown for some time before coming back online. There's also a few miscellaneous items that were mentioned as well throughout these loot items. That being a mobile armory, which will allow you to retrieve your loadouts and can only be used once per activation. And that's something that we saw reference to whenever we talked about respawning. So seemingly like a portable loadout holder for whenever you die. Then there's also an armory kiosk, which doesn't have anything listed here for it, but is something that is mentioned. Then we see a little bit of the talk of plunder. Now, plunder, like we said, is apparently that monetary and in-game currency for Battle Royale, to which you can earn plunder by completing missions and eliminating enemies, to which you can purchase game-changing items at plunder box locations. So it's sort of like the classic Spec Ops missions where you could buy upgrades, perhaps, or maybe even kill streaks. Maybe that's how you get the kill streaks. They're not actually kill oriented, but there's something that take an obscene amount of plunder to get. But you end up collecting plunder and you can convert it into XP by depositing it into ATM machines located around the game. There's a post image also in which the player who collects the most plunder in a match will be named the best plunderer. There's also a minimum amount of plunder that is required before depositing into the bank. So you're going to have to rack up a little bit on you and keep it on your person before you can get rid of it. Then also you can end up getting it from dropped or eliminated enemies, but if it's not picked up, it will expire after some time. When players enter a bank to deposit into that ATM, the bank alarm will sound alerting enemies within the area that somebody's there. So that'll be interesting as well. And the final thing we'll talk about is that of the fact that there seems to be some mini games and other objective based missions in game, as well as some other miscellaneous items. Now, missions are apparently going to be something within Battle Royale in which it features these and you can activate them by finding tablets. There can only be one mission active at a time per squad, but they end up coming in at various different mission types, those being tracked timed run, assassination in which you have to eliminate a specific player, scavenger hunt in which you have to collect scavenger crates, domination in which you have to capture domination points, and a random which is a random mission. If no bounty is available for the assassination mission, apparently consolation plunder will be awarded, and when a mission is started or completed, the entire squad will be notified by an on-screen prompt. As for other miscellaneous items, these ones don't really at the very beginning have much to them because we don't know what it is 
but there's a Fulton recovery device placed around the map. There's a Fulton balloon that can go away successfully. That balloon also can be shot down. But then also some cool things is that players have the ability to mark vehicles, locations, items, enemies, and dangerous positions on the map. And finally, Battle Royale will have its own slice on that main menu. So the three that we see now for campaign, multiplayer, and co-op, that's going to have Battle Royale on it as well. But likely will actually probably launch into its own separate application. Though, if it does follow that previous rumor, that begs a lot of questions as to why all of this was still in the game files for Modern Warfare. And how much of that, if it is a different application, is still yet to be revealed. One thing, though, that I do want to say here before we wrap all this up is that I know that there's going to be some comments saying, well, why are they working on a Battle Royale when there's still so much that needs to be worked on for MP, for Spec Ops, for even campaign and PC with the choppiness of the cutscenes? Well, the thing is, right now, again, if all these indications point to it, it seems like everything so far has lined up. It's not actually Infinity Ward working on this. It's Raven that is taking the lead here at this. So it's a completely different studio, a completely different team. And so therefore the resources, assets, and time put into the multiplayer, the campaign, the spec ops, that stuff won't be taken away. That's still going to be Infinity Ward's main primary focus. So this is two completely different things, just branded and using similar assets. So that said, that's kind of where we're at here with this. But again, an absolutely insane amount of intel dropped as of earlier this morning so go check out the link down there in the description below for the full reddit thread and check it out for yourself but that said that's where we're gonna wrap it up that's everything i got to say here with this and i think that just about covers everything so let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below are you guys looking forward to this here the potential free to play 200 player battle royale are you guys looking forward to anything in particular we mentioned out of this or maybe not so much whatever it is feel free to let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern Warfare. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.